Hello everybody, it's Josie here. Uh, the reason I look like this today uh, is I'm getting my witch on. So basically, we are talking about one of my favourite things in the whole world, and that is witches in literature, and even more so my favourite thing, queer witches in literature. So of course this is the perfect season, Halloween, spooky season. I thought I'd film this kind of in the evening, give a bit of a spooky vibe with the candles, hope you like it. Um, but I wanted to recommend some of the books that I've read that I really enjoy um, and that feature queer witches in them. Please let me know um, kind of any others because I'm always on the lookout for stories featuring wonderful, amazing, lovely, queer, witchy craft, witchiness. So here we go. The first book that I want to talk about is this one over here. I've kind of talked about the series quite a bit, but it is very good. It's, um, this is the first book, The Circle. So this is kind of the Engels fourth, fourth, if I'm saying that correctly, series. It is, um, you could say it's kind of a slightly craft inspired about the circle of witches um, at high school. So is it, a, it is a YA series. But what's cool about this is it's set in Sweden. So it kind of has a sort of an element of Scandinavian to it. I, I always feel and I really enjoy that. And these characters are really diverse, there's some great representation in this, and you also have kind of a really slow burn, gorgeous kind of female-female relationship um, in this series. Uh, so I really enjoy it. There's kind of demons and witchcraft and the circle of, and it's all very heavy female orientated, circle of female witches, um, but they're yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I like that kind of Scandi twist on the whole kind of high school teen witch um, scenario. The next one, speaking of high school teen witches, again, is a book I do recommend a lot, but I love it and I couldn't not do it in this video. And that is The Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. Amy Rose Capetta is just, just one of my favorite, favorite, favorite authors. Um, and this book is no exception. They always do amazing representation. Um, and this book is set in California. Um, it is set in this town where witchcraft is actually kind of acknowledged in a way, but you do have this group of girls that are, they are witches, they are magical. Um, they live together, they love together, they are best friends. Um, there's also relationships between them. Um, they're all on the queer spectrum. Um, and it's just a beautifully, written book and it also has kind of a murder mystery suspense element to it that I love. One of my all-time favorites. Definitely will be reading, rereading it this Halloween. Love it, love it, love it. Then the next one, this is kind of a bit lighter on the witch theme but still within the witchy realms, is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Um, I was turned on to this book by Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Darling um, and I love it. Um, <laughs> It's just so beautiful. Again, it's beautifully written. It's about this this small island um, where every year a bunch of bird watchers come to the island and the family that run the uh, kind of guest house on the island, uh, their family has magical powers. Um, and the main character, her magical powers haven't really surfaced yet, which is something that is worrying her kind of on the eve of her birthday. And there's also a very, very beautiful female female romance in this again slow burn lovely just lovely um and the kind of interweaving of kind of magical realism the imagery in this book it is just beautiful so if you want something that isn't kind of heavy on on sort of demons and, and fighting and that but just has that magical element i would highly recommend this book then the next one um spell book of the lost and found um by moira fowley doyle um moira is also now just one of my favorite authors. Um, I've read all of her books. They are beautiful. Um, this one, perfect for the season. It is, again, it is about a group of, so a spell is cast and uh, in this town and things go missing, hence the lost and found. And then you've got a group of teens that kind of find themselves together, um, kind of stumble upon this magical spell. And again, there's some beautiful queer characters in there and lovely female, female romance, gorgeously written as well. Love all of her books. The next one is These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. Now, this starts my run of purple covers for witch books, hence the um, kind of purpley tinged look. Um, so this one is um, again about this is actually set in Salem, Massachusetts, which is really cool. I love witch books that are set in Salem. Um, and our main character is an elemental witch, but she needs to hide this fact. Um, and she's kind of going about her life in high school and then things take a turn for the worse. Um, there is mayhem. Um, but also part of this plot is that she's trying to avoid her ex-girlfriend, who's also an elemental witch, and a new girl comes to town. So 
fabulously, wonderfully queer and just kind of, if you like, high school witchcraft. This is great. Um, the next one is Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovich. Um, this book is just gorgeous and it has a follow-up, Fierce Like a Firestorm, um, which I am dying to read as well. Um, but this one is about, well I would say this is a bit practical magic-y, so it is about uh, two girls and, well this is about women, so this is, I would say this is an adult book, not a YA book, and their mother is killed. And they're from a kind of a family of witches and a bit like in Practical Magic, they're told that they're not supposed to uh, practice their witchcraft. Um, and they then find out after their mother is killed about their family heritage, their family line, how the magic kind of sits within their family, what goes on. And um, it's it's really good um, and it's really beautifully written and I really want to know where this book goes. Then the next one I've got here is Toil and Trouble, 15 Tales of Women and Witchcraft. This is a short story collection um, and this is the third in all of the uh, purple covers. Uh, this is great. This has got um, some queer stories in them. Uh, not all of the, the stories are queer, but all of them are from a female perspective. Um, they're all these little vignettes, all magically inclined, all witchy inclined. Um, and there's a few really lovely uh, queer female female um, stories in this selection. The last one I've got in this pile is this over here. This is Saw Kill Girls. Again, couldn't really do a, a video like this without Saw Kill Girls by Clayla Grand. Love this book. This is about the island of Saw Kill uh, where girls have gone missing and uh, a new family comes into town and this girl starts to investigate what happened. Again, there's female-female romance and um, asexual relationship um, rep in this. I would say that the kind of the magic and the witchcraft element is not that there is a demon, there's a family that's serving a demon, um, but it's maybe a little bit different from the other um, witchy elements, but I just thought it it's perfect for the season and it kind of has that witchy tinge to it, um, so I wanted to include it and it's wonderfully queer. Um, so those are kind of the more novel books, actually, I'm lying. I've got two more that are also short story collections. So I wanted to mention these as well because uh, I, I'm not, I haven't had the best time with short story collections and these are two of my favourite, so they have to go in. And they actually have Witch on the title. So this one is Witches, Princesses and women's at, Women at Arms. So this one is definitely more adult. This is erotic lesbian fairy tale retellings. This is fantastic. If you want erotic lesbian fem, female, female fairy tale retellings, this is the book for you. Um, there are witches, there are knights, there are, oh, there's so many different takes on some of the classic fairy tales that you might recognise, um, but there's witches in this as well. Again, maybe not the traditional witchcrafty type of element, but really good. And then this one over here is Kissing the Witch. Um, and again, this is not necessarily, not all the stories are necessarily about witches or witchcraft, but there are witches in this anthology. And again, it's kind of like a reimagining of fairy tales, but from the female perspective, um, from the women in the tales. Um, there's a couple of queer stories in here, um, but this is more, I would say this is slightly more on a feminist leaning in the way that in a lot of fairy tales, the female perspective is not the main perspective where here this is. And they're taking some of almost the minor female characters and actually giving them their own um, their own voice. And I think Emma Donahue does an amazing job of this. this is my favorite book of theirs by far. Um, it's really, really good. And then two more that aren't actually novels or short story collections, but I thought I had to include them in this video, is they're both by, um, so this one is by Rebecca Thomas, and this is Witch. And this is actually a poetry collection. It is incredible. Um, it is just all about um, kind of witches and, <laughs> I guess it's it's feminism and and likening that to witchcraft. It is fantastic. Uh, these poems are gorgeous. Um, they're they're hard to read at times. Some of them they're really hard hitting, but um, it takes queerness, it takes feminism, um, and it takes witchcraft, and it blends it all together in this gorgeous poetry. I think Rebecca did an amazing job. And then this one is actually edited by Rebecca and also Sarah Shin, and this is Spells, a twenty first century occult. A poetry so again um, this is this is my kind of poetry also how stunning is that cover look at that it's beautiful um, but this is again taking kind of a feminist occult leaning um, stance on on poetry and and 
this, these, a lot of these poems are written almost like spells and it's perfect for this time of year and it's perfect if you like anything witchy and feminist and um and slightly queer um yeah it's it's gorgeous like I couldn't I couldn't do this video without kind of talking about those two poetry collections because they're my favorite but that is it like I said let me know if I've missed anything let me know um just if you've read these what you think of them and if you have any great witchy queer uh, books that you think I should read um, let me know in the comments down below and have a wonderful witchy magical October I will speak to you all again soon bye bye